it's because there are bad people who will do bad things. And if we could stop that, we'd stop that, right? But we can't stop that right now, so instead we talk about what we would do if, right? Just like we talk about abductions or somebody grabbing you or even a bully punching you, unfortunately we do have to talk about what if someone tries to hurt you and a bunch of your friends and your teachers and everybody else at school. So it's something obviously the entire country has been talking about, a lot of people have been talking about since Friday, and people started talking about it six years ago when it happened in Pennsylvania, and people started talking about it 12 or 13 years ago when it happened at a school in Colorado, and there have been several other schools that it's happened. But one of the interesting things is that the reason people this last few days have been talking about something that happened in Colorado 12 or 13 years ago, or something that happened in Pennsylvania six or seven years ago, is because these things are incredibly rare, right? Incredibly rare. So that's the first thing I want to make sure that you guys know and you have in your head, right? Because as soon as you knew what we were talking about, a lot of you got really quiet, right? Some of you started thinking about what that might be like and being concerned about it, confused about it, maybe scared about it. Well, just like we talk about getting bullied, just like we talk about getting abducted, just like we're going to talk about what would happen if someone came into your school to try to hurt you with a gun, try to hurt your friends, try to hurt your teachers, we have to put those things in perspective, right? And these things are very, very rare. And that's the first thing I want to make sure that we get into our head, all right? Very, very rare. It's incredibly unlikely that these things are ever going to happen anywhere near you, at any school that you attend, to anyone you can elementary school. There's a little buzzer, right? You have to buzz yourself in. And, and the schools that we have here are incredibly safe, right? They are, they are, it's a great community. Everybody kind of knows each other. It's kind of a small community. So if someone were to show up to the school that wasn't recognized, right, we'd hope that somebody would say something. You know, who is that guy? Who is that girl? Who is that kid? You know, why are they here? What are they doing here? And that's really the first thing. You know, the first thing after you understand that this isn't something that's likely to happen to you or your friends or your school or this town, is to realize, okay, well, let's talk about if it were to happen, what would we do? And how would we handle it? There are probably visitor passes or stickers that parents put on, right? Have you seen this? Right? So if you saw an adult walking through the halls without a visitor pass, or if you saw a 20-year-old kid or a 15-year-old kid that you didn't recognize, it looked like he was lost, was wandering around, maybe carrying a bag or, you know, who knows what, you'd probably tell a teacher, right? And that's what you should do. Let somebody know. Because it's probably nothing. It's probably, you still want to tell somebody, right? If you see somebody who's, who comes in a side door instead of going to the office. If you see somebody who doesn't have the sticker on, right? Certainly if you see somebody kind of sneaking into the school or breaking into the school, you would want to let somebody know. At the moment that you think something is wrong, at the moment that you think something is a problem, someone's trying to hurt people in your school, what do you think the first thing you should do is? Go. Uh, right? But we're just gonna, we're gonna go with get away. I don't even know if you can read that, but we know what it means, right? So we know what it means. Get away. First thing I want you to do. You see somebody with a gun, with a chainsaw, with a bat, you see somebody who looks angry, or you just see that person trying to break into a window, break into a door, sneak around. Somebody that doesn't belong to us, get away. Don't confront them, don't go talk to them. Just get and then we're gonna go with hi. Okay, get away and hide. Because first and foremost, you need to protect yourself. Right? We're all individually responsible for ourselves. You need to try to be safe. If you see someone who is clearly trying to hurt you or other kids in the school or anybody else, and you can get away and hide, cool. Good for you. If you're if you go into that, how many of you spend any part of your day on the first floor of your school? That's seven. Could you go out a window? Yes. Okay. So you could get away if you were in a room and some guy was trying to get into the door, through that door to get into that room, you could go out a window and get away and then hide. If you can't hide, right, let's say the bad guy knows you are. Let's say I were going to go into that, that little closet, that storage closet we've got over here. If I were to go over there and, and hide in there, but the bad guy is trying to break into the door, what's something I could do to make that harder? Um. Find something. To, find something. To push it. Put something against it. Barricade. That's exactly the word. Did you read my article? No. 
Okay. okay, that's exactly should have been that's exactly that's exactly the next step. Evade or get away, hide, and then barricade, right? Bigger. Who doesn't know what barricade means? Everybody knows that word? Oh, smart tools. Okay, so we'll go with I'm gonna go with the block. You know, we can do that or we can barricade. You have the choice. If you're a bad guy and you want to do bad things, and there's a door that's open and a door that's closed, which way are you gonna go? Okay, if there's a door that's closed and there's a door that's closed and locked, which way is gonna be easier for you to get on the other side and do what you want to do? Don't work. If the bad guy is coming through the door anyway, what's something that you guys are going to be forced to do? Um, like do something to protect yourself. Do something to protect yourself by adding some type of defensive tool. All right, add some type of defensive tool to the mix. What kind of defensive tools do you have in the classroom? Go. Stapler. A staple. Possibly. Yeah. Why a staple? Um, you could put staples in their eyes. I think that's a bit of a stretch. We could, a staple has sharp edges, right? I mean, a stapler is a piece of metal and plastic with sharp edges. It's better to smack somebody in the head with a stapler than it is with your hand. But what else could you do with a stapler before we go to something else? Let's think about it. What could we do with a stapler? You could throw it. You could throw it. Cause a distraction, right? If, you, I don't, if, someone, if someone has a stapler winging in their head, what are they going to do? They're going to turn it away or they're going to move their hands to block it. And that gives you a second to pick up something else. Well, they didn't choose to go into the lion pit at the zoo and find something to fight. Why? What, what, what's the difference between kids and lions? Go. Lions put tear your shreds. Yeah, lions put tear your shreds. Right? If they didn't go to the police department, why didn't they go to the police department? They, they train and defend themselves, right? They came to a school. They're looking for people, and they aren't expecting people who will fight. So throwing a stapler, taking the mop. What about the chair? What about taking a chair and just winging a chair at somebody, right? Or Reese, where's your backpack? Reese's backpack weighs 7,000 pounds. Go grab it, right? You take a 7,000 pound backpack and throw it at somebody. And it's going to cause a, it's going to cause a distraction. It might hurt them. Right. Chances are that's going to stop just about any bullet that's going to be shot at you in a school. If someone's going to carry in there and start trying to shoot people with, chances are this backpack will stop bullets. Or if I try to hit somebody, right? Distracting? Not a fire extinguisher. It's an inert training unit. You know what inert means? Right, this is actually kind of, kind of looks like a little fire extinguisher, there, right? Kind of stinks. All right. So that that cloud that comes out of there is probably going to distract someone, right? If someone comes into your room, kick through the door, and they think that they're going to just find helpless little kids, and what they find is kids with chairs and with backpacks and with mops and with staplers winging books at them and hit them in the face with fire extinguisher stuff, that's probably going to cause them to get distracted from their mission of hurting people that they think can't defend themselves, right? So the next two steps that we talk about are arm yourself with a tool. Get a defensive tool of some kind, all right? And then respond. And that response is you do what you have to do, right? You don't just hide, you don't just hope, you do what you have to do in order to actually cause that person to get distracted from what their mission is, in order to scare them and make them realize that you're not just helpless kids, in order to hurt their ability to hurt you. And eventually, hopefully, with two or three or four of you, or one or two of you and an adult, or one of you in a chair and a big heavy backpack, that you stop that person from being able to hurt you and the rest of your friends. Because the truth is, at some point, it might just be you in that room. You run away, you hide, you barricade yourself, you get your hands on any defensive tool you can find. And then if the guy comes in the room, you do what you have to do. Do something. Right? We talked about this before. We talk about being abducted. We talk about bullying. We talk about all kinds of things that can happen to you. Do something. Don't just be the victim. Don't just be the person that hopes the bad guy will go away. 
right? I want you guys to do something. Right away. Communicate. Can't read that name. Sorry, it says communicate. So communicate. Here's the thing about communicate. If you're hiding and you call out to tell everybody else, to warn people, to try to communicate, kind of gives up your hiding place, right? You have to be smart about communicating. How many of you have your cell phones with you in school? You could call 911, right? Let the police know what's going on. You see a person who is clearly trying to do something wrong at the school, and you are hiding, and you don't think anybody else knows about it, absolutely. Use that cell phone, call 911. If you see that person with the gun moving down the hallway, going around the corner that way, you, as you get away and you go to hide, go to an adult, go to someone at your school in the other direction and let them know. It's vital that you communicate what's going on. You guys, have you guys done, done a drill in your school for that? Lockdown. What's the drill? What do they call it? Lockdown. Lockdown, right? Which part of this is lockdown? Hide. Hide. And? Lockdown. Lock. And? Get away. And get away. And what else? Which other? There's one other thing up here. Communicate. So one, two, three, four, you've already been told to do. You've already practiced it. Have any of you guys talked about these other two? Getting a defensive tool and doing something. Right? Those are kind of the two special pieces. Getting a defensive tool and doing something. Go! What are you going to do? All right, remember, with the fire extinguisher, do you need to run towards them? No. Point it at me. Give me a burst. There you go. Stop. All right, lead with the heavy object. Go back. This time, hit him with the heavy object, not your hand. Go. Stop. There it is. Stop. 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 I don't know. Right? And see, here's the problem. is Because these people are, are kind of broken in the head, we can sit around all day and talk about what they might do or even why they're doing it, but I don't know. And the fact that they're there trying to hurt people in the first place, to me, means I'm not going to try to figure out. I'm not going to guess. I know if I hit somebody in the face with a stapler, they're, it's going to be harder for them to hurt me. I know if I get away from them and they can't find me, because I'm hiding or because I'm barricading behind a locked door, I know I'm safer.